Good evening. Good evening. I want to welcome all of you to the worship of God here at Westminster. It is good to be in the house of the Lord on this evening. Throughout the day, we have been having trouble with the church's alarm system. It has been going off randomly, and um, it may, in fact, disrupt our worship tonight. There are those who are trained to make it stop, but if for some reason it shouldn't, then that might mean something is really wrong, and we will try to indicate if we need to evacuate. What a way to start the evening. <laughs> Let us be in the attitude of worship. Will those who are able please rise? Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Teach us, Lord, to count our days that we may gain the wise heart. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us unite in prayer. Merciful God, you called us forth from the dust of the earth. You claimed us for Christ in the waters of baptism. Look upon us as we enter these 40 days, bearing the mark of ashes, and bless our journey through the desert of Lent, to the font of rebirth. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, our prayer, the chant of humble and grateful hearts. All that we do and pray is in the name of Jesus. For in his cross, you proclaim your love forever and ever. Amen.
You may be seated. Let us unite in prayer. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and be taught your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Isaiah. We read from chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast? But you do not see. Why humble ourselves? But you do not notice. Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. And then turning to the New Testament, we read from 2 Corinthians, reading from chapter 5 and the first part of chapter 6. Here again, God's holy word. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. And we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. 
See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacles in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our scripture readings continue as we turn to the Gospel of Matthew, reading from chapter 6, verses 1 to 6, and then verses 16 through 21. Jesus is addressing the crowds on the Sermon on the Mount, and he says, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come to your word tonight, Help its message penetrate our hearts. Help us refashion ourselves in ways that please you. Nourish us by your word. Strengthen us by your spirit. Grant us the confidence that comes from people who know you as our Father. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. It's called cold patch, and they have to use it in winter. They throw it on the road in those potholes that are the size of soup terrines. I mean, these things are enormous. They're like great big punch bowls. And as you weave across the streets trying to, well, save your tires and your suspension and, well, your very lives, it seems important to do something in the meantime. And so they put in this product that they know they're gonna have to take out when they actually repair the street. But it fills in a little bit of the hole for now. I think so often our lives are a little bit like those bumpy roads that we know we have these obvious holes and defects in ourselves, those deep places where we ourselves are afraid to look. There are roads that we can't travel on even in our own lives, and so we cover them over with a smile or a friendly gesture. We cover them over with silence or avoidance. We cover them over and hope that no one else can see. I was on a mission trip in Costa Rica, 
And uh, when they get a pothole, they really get a pothole. This is volcanic soil, and once it carves away underneath, a lot of times there's not much down there. And so they would put this like giant tree in the hole, and at least you would know to weave around it. There was no confusion, you know. It was this great big tree. And maybe, maybe that would be a more honest way to approach those places that should be avoided in ourselves. Swerve around. Avoid this place where I am so selfish. Look out. This is a place where I am burdened by my own deficits. One thing that's so tempting to do, especially during Lent, is to cover over those problems with a spackle of piety. And this is a problem that's been true for religious people for generations. The prophet spoke keenly to people that were living about six centuries before Jesus. And he said, you know, what you're doing doesn't really draw God's attention because you're doing it for yourselves. You do it as a way to deflect attention from your hardened heart, from the hateful way you treat your employees. You do it to divert attention from the way that you have failed to live up to what God wants you to do. You serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers, he says. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. And then he goes on to say, you know, all those usual things that you do, the special outfits, the sackcloth, the ashes, bending down low, all those things, uh, they can just be so much show. And what God really intends for you to be are people who reflect the kind of justice that God admires, that God wants for the people of God. There's this interesting little punchline in here, one of those things that, well, it's, it's a little hard to catch up to, especially if you're just following along, but here it is. Yeah, maybe it is. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, okay, this is the kind of fast I choose. To share your bread with the hungry, bring your, the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them. And this is the one that's so interesting. And not to hide yourself from your own kin. Uh, hospitality laws insisted that if your relatives found you at home, you had to let them in. And not only did you have to let them in, you had to let them stay. <laughs> and if they were seeking you out, you couldn't hide. That's at least what the prophet says. Don't hide. Be present. Show up. And so as we enter a season in which certain kinds of disciplines are encouraged, I celebrated Mardi Gras last night. I bought a bag of Cheetos. <laughs> um, didn't eat it all. But that's my usual Lenten observance is just to remember this partial fast that becomes so humbling. Those things that you give up and suddenly they become so overwhelming and, and so much a part of your thoughts. Uh, and when those things become part of your thoughts, it's a chance to let something else become part of your thoughts to make room for the way that God wants your life to be shaped. To notice that so often we fill it up with things that don't last or don't serve or don't please. And so finally, 
we need just to make room, not for a temporary fix, but for God to remake us in ways that are well-pleasing. And so we offer ourselves up. We recognize that the show of piety is a show of nothing at all. And the thing that we have to do is cling to the God of our salvation, who promises to make us new, to reshape us, to fill the gaps, and to feed our lives. In this one, we offer our trust. And to this one, we confess our sins. Let us read responsibly the prayer of confession that's found in your book. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You will not despise. Let us continue this time of confession in silence. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence. For it is only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
us unite in prayer. Mysterious God, we wear the mark of ashes so that the world will know we are in mourning for our lives. Help us to let go of our guilt, fear, and failings, for they are no longer ours to carry. Thank you for carrying the weight of our burdens so that we are free to live, love, and serve. may be seated. Hear the gracious words of our Savior Jesus Christ. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe, you are our God and we are creatures of your hand. You made us from the dust of the earth, breathed into us the breath of life, and set us in your world to love and serve you. When we rejected your love and ignored your wisdom, you did not reject us. You loved us still and called us to turn again to you in obedience and in love. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Out of your great love for the world, you sent Jesus among us to set us free from the tyranny of evil. He lived as one of us, sharing our joys and sorrows. By his dying and rising, he releases us from bondage to sin and frees us from the dominion of death. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate the joy of the redemption you have won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves. According to his commandment, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. And so now, as our Savior has taught us, we pray together, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of Jesus' arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper. And said, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Tonight we observe communion by intention. We'll be doing one side of the church at a time. We ask that you uh, come down by the center aisle and return, return to your pews using the side aisle. Come, for all is now prepared.
May the God of peace make you holy in every way and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.